Let's get to know Daphne Geisler. We're going to start off with some rapid fire questions. What's your star sign? Capricorn. Favourite meal and who cooks it? Uh, salmon. And I cook for myself at the moment. When you were at school, which teen group were you in? I.e. the jocks, mean girls, alternatives, oh. loners. <laughs> um, I wasn't aware. A, a, a small rural school um, didn't have a lot of those groups. Um, and I guess I was in the kids who come in on the bus. Are you anti-vax? No, I'm not anti-vax. I've had my vaccinations. Last TV show or movie you watched? Um, Veep series when I had COVID I went through the whole series Favourite mode of transport? Um, my Honda at the moment although I do have an electric bike and now that my dog's not around to take me for a walk I'll be using my bike more often Ever been arrested? No What would you consider to be a good crime to be arrested for? Pulling out GM products Having had an organic orchard for a few years, um, I'm really concerned about some of our food quality. If you're running for government, which party would you be with? Um, could I straddle Greens and Labour? Okay, on to the serious questions now. Why are you running for mayor? Um, to make a difference, I think, to make change. I ran in the last election and I wasn't successful. Um, but I've been following all the council meetings, I've been reading the papers, making comments, discussing the issues. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the national conference for the local government. And I do think we're at a point where change is going to happen, radical change. And, um, and I think that um, I want to be part of it and can um, help this community make the most of it. If you could wave a magic wand and change one thing in South Wadarapa, what would it be? Better communication. A lot of our problems, I think, stem from the fact that um, we've had a power and control mentality rather than a collaborative, communicative partnership approach to our problems. Um, I heard a lot at the conference I mentioned about the fact that local communities know their local problems. Often they know the solutions and they just need facilitation for getting them resolved. And I think we need to do a lot more listening and a lot more communicating. If you win the election, what issue will you make your number one priority and how do you plan to go about it? Um, changing that culture. And I think you can go about it by walking the talk, by getting out into the community. Um, I think that um, we can hold our meetings out in the community. We can have lots of opportunities for engagement. Um, we can ensure that however people want to communicate with us is there and available and that we respond to those. I think once we get that in place, then actually sitting down and addressing the major issues that we're going to face in the future will be easier. Can you give a practical example about how we might improve communication in South Wadalapa? Um, when we're approached for information, I think it should be clear, real, true, and actually address the issue and then available to the public. I've, um, had a, I've had a few soap boxes over the last few years, but one of my soap boxes has always been making information accessible. And, um, and also, so that means at every level. So when we're chatting with somebody, we're not saying um, this item is very large. We're actually saying how big that item is and what the implications of it are. Um, and I think that, um, that we can save a lot of time and be a lot more efficient if we communicate upfront on lots of information. What is the region routinely lacking or neglecting that you hope to change? I think it's responsiveness. And it may not be immediately fixing the problem, but it's responsiveness in what is the timeline? What are the issues? What can we do? So when we hear from the community about things that aren't going right, and there's quite a bit out there at the moment that's not going right, actually communicating timelines and um, what some of the options might be, and actually including the community in those options, because what's one of the worst things I've heard over the last few years when I was um, at a council meeting was asking for clarification of a problem that, the, that was trying to be fixed, and the answer was, there isn't a problem. 
So I think we need very clear clarification of what the problems are and what some of the solutions are. What can the council do to help slow down or limit climate change? I think the council's one aspect of a whole community approach. So I think it starts with what can you and I do? What can um, businesses do? What can local government do? What can we all do in a cohesive um, response? And, um, and I think the local council can be leaders in actually showing what some of those options are. Um, I hear a lot of people very concerned about climate change, and I think it is one of the key issues that we're going to face. I like to think that part of being on council is leaving a better place for our grandchildren. Well, if we're not careful, there will be no future for our grandchildren because climate change is, is so important. Um, but I think a lot of us in the community don't know what to do other than you know, the simple things around our properties. But if we all work together and built off other people's ideas, we could um, do a lot more. Who are the at-risk groups in South Wadadapa and how will you help them? Um, I think it spreads across the community in each group. So if you look at the young, I think that um, we do need to take care of the children in the area. And, um, and that might be through um, health aspects. It might be through cultural you know, fun and community activities. It might be through making sure they've got a good environment to run around and play in, um, all the way through to the elderly. And, um, and that is a group that will be growing in the wire up in the future. And we need a much more cohesive response to how we take care of the elderly, both in their homes and in facilities. What is your stance on Three Waters and how could council do a better job? I think the, the issue has now been clearly identified and that nobody can doubt we've got a very serious issue. Um, I always go back to, I think it was Henry Ford who said, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And, um, and we need radical change. And I see this reform as that radical change and hopefully we'll then get radical solutions. I know it's very complex, it's very tricky. There's lots of things that aren't clarified yet, but, um, but I think with the partnership approach in our community, um, we've got the opportunity to um, fix some of the problems that aren't gonna get fixed otherwise. So would you say you're for or against? I'm for the reform. What is an issue that's most important to you personally, not necessarily the region, and why? I think it's loss of opportunity. Um, I think that that leads to waste and um, concern and crisis in people's lives. And if we don't look at some of the problems that we face as opportunities um, with a much more optimistic view and, and include the community in those issues, then we've lost opportunities. And that's going to be the saddest thing um, that we look back on and say we could have done better. Is there anything else you'd like to say in terms of the upcoming elections? I'd like for people to ensure that they are registered. It's very important um, and that they do have an opportunity to chat with people who are standing. We've got a fabulous range of people. I'm really happy to see there's a lot more younger people standing. There's a lot more diverse people standing. But get out there, talk to them and then make a conscious decision of who you think can represent your community the best.